morning when I have your attention. Please, can you come a bit closer so we feel more like a family, more like a community on this special day? Very good. Honorable guests, distinguished colleagues, dear students, fellow alumni, representatives of the CU design and project teams, representatives of the general contractor, welcome. Today is a very special day for CEU, and we would like to thank you all for being here to take part in our CEU Reviews Laying the Foundation event. Before welcoming our speakers, I would like to start with a short recognition of our key guests and colleagues, and introduction to this location and event. We are honored to have with us today important members of the CEU community, and key participants of our project. First and foremost, I would like to extend a special welcome to my fellow alumni who are here this weekend for the alumni reunion. We are very pleased that you are able to be on campus to celebrate this memorable occasion. And our current students, of course, faculty and staff here today. Finally, but certainly not least, we are pleased to have with us representatives from our architectural design and project teams and our general contractor. Together, we are in the process of building the renewed CEU. Today, in this place, you are standing on what is the foundation of the transformed CEU campus. We gather here as a community to mark this important milestone by placing a capsule containing building plans into the foundation of our new building. Since we are in the middle of an active construction site, as you can see, a little frame of reference might be useful for you to imagine what is happening and what will be happening in this space around you. The ground where you are all standing represents the deepest point of the new Nador 15 building and constitutes, as mentioned, the, the foundation of the new CEU campus. The gray walls around you will soon turn into the colorful campus that you all took part in envisioning and creating. The new auditorium will come alive at the front part of this site. Our student cafe will emerge just above our heads. And the new conference facilities, classrooms, and the new library will fill the six floors above us, crowned by a beautiful roof garden. Looking to your right, the void will turn into departmental offices, even spaces and classrooms to be filled in just over a year by many of you, as well as new incoming students and alumni returning to their alma mater. We are looking forward to that day, and despite the many complexities of this project, we hope to experience a smooth 15-month construction period still ahead of us. Now, as to the program for today, the key address will be delivered by John Shatuk, CEU's President and Rector, followed by Tibor Varadi, University Professor, Department of Legal Studies, representing the faculty. The student speech will be delivered by Sherlene Afshar Vogel, MA student at the Department of Public Policy and President of the Student Union. And finally, our distinguished staff colleague, Diane Geraci, director of the CEU Library, will speak. Following the speeches, we will have the laying of the capsule ceremony, officiated by President and Rector Shuttle. Immediately following this, we will take a picture of the entire group to capture this wonderful occasion. Thank you, Jofi, and welcome to all of you. Um, I know it's not many Saturday mornings where you descend down into the ground uh, and try to look around and see what's happening and hope that nothing is going to fall on your head. Um, but this is a very special Saturday morning, and we are fortunate that the weather is as good as it is. So I know the program said rain or shine. We clearly have plenty of shine and we are shining in that sense. So I think let me make a few remarks about why we're here, what we're doing, and where we're going, not only architecturally, but 
as a university and why this is such an important moment. It is indeed a historic moment, uh, but there are, before saying anything further, I want to thank a number of people for their dedication and hard work over the past five years, which is the period of time that we've been planning this project, who have brought us to this moment, and we are very grateful to the campus redevelopment team, led by Paul Barash, uh, with Jofia Pazitna as well, who has just spoken to you, the design team led by Sheila O'Donnell and John Twomey, Mate Hidash Nemeti, the project team and the general contractor who are turning our ambitions into a reality, the many CEU staff and faculty who have consulted with the campus redevelopment team to ensure that our plans about the future and how the campus uh, is developing actually fit our vision. I want to say a particular word of thanks to the faculty and staff who have temporarily relocated to other, uh, other places while this construction is going on. And I have to say, someone remarked to me the other day that um, redeveloping a campus while running a university is a little bit like having open heart surgery performed on you when you're running in a marathon. So I'm not sure that that's an accurate description, but it certainly is complicated. We know that. Um, I also want to thank the CEU students who have brought fresh ideas about how the campus can enhance student life. Uh, to our alumni, whose dedication to the university, of course, is essential to our success, and to the trustees and donors and friends, many of many of our friends and supporters of the university here with us today and here in spirit who are supporting us as we help bring our plans to fruition. So as we approach what is next year CU's 25th anniversary, uh, we should, I think, reflect on the vision of our founder, George Soros, who saw the need for a university 25 years ago, dedicated to democracy and open society at a time of great upheaval in this region as nations of Central and Eastern Europe were gaining their long-awaited and hard-won freedom. As CEU has achieved much in its short history, we've grown from a regional university into a global one with an international reputation. We have more than 12,000 alumni now in 149 countries working for change in their own communities and nations and across borders and boundaries. We are a great experiment and a unique model for graduate education. CEU has been described in the international media recently as a laboratory for democracy and a school of human rights. Today, I think our mission is more important than ever. Democratic values and human rights are contested across the globe. Open societies are, in fact, under threat. And CEU is a university where democracy can be explored and debated and discussed, and what it means can be uh, defined in some ways and in some cases different ways. It's a place where students and professors and practitioners from more than 100 countries can come together. It's a place where Ideas are exchanged and solutions proposed where knowledge is created and where even sometimes truth can be discovered. Now our academic foundations are strong. I think there's no question that we have a strong university. But now it's the time for CEU's physical renewal. Our new campus will bring all parts of the university together, making CEU much more than just the sum of separate parts. <laughs> Our new buildings will accommodate our growth and match our ambitions. They will be open and interconnected, environmentally friendly and sustainable, with plenty of space for teaching, for learning, for debate, for collaboration, for reflection, for communication, for creativity. They will beautifully reflect, I think, CEU's open society mission, and they will preserve the architectural heritage of Budapest. We are, in fact, at a historic moment. We're ready to lay the foundation for the future of the university. So let me end on a reflective note with a poem by Cheslov Milos, whose words 
remind us that what we are doing here today is in fact a project for the ages. The poem is called, And Yet the Books. And yet the books will be there on the shelves, separate beings that appeared once, still wet as shining chestnuts under a tree in autumn, and touched, coddled, began to live in spite of fires on the horizon, castles blown up, tribes on the march, planets in motion. We are, said the books, even as their pages were being torn out or a buzzing flame licked away their letters, so much more durable than we are, whose frail warmth cools down with memory, disperses, perishes. I imagine the earth when I am no more. Nothing happens, no loss. It's still a strange pageant. Women's dresses, dewy lilacs, a song in the valley. Yet the books will be there. There on the shelves, well-born, derived from people, but also from radiance, from heights. Thank you. Dear colleagues, dear, dear friends, let me first say that I am truly honored to be able to say some words at this really exceptional opportunity. When I'm saying that this is an exceptional opportunity, I actually have some basis of comparison. I've been a member of the civil community since 1993, which is not much less than our full history. This also shows rather persuasively that I am not a youngster. I remember that in 93, the mayor of Budapest visited us, and I had a privilege to greet him and to speak about our university. It was a time when the CU started testing its mission against the challenges of the real world. I said, and I'm quoting now, that in our region we have a legacy of untouchable truth, and we know how much nonsense and how much human suffering follows from the rule that various truths which cannot be questioned stay and they cannot be challenged either. At a moment when a society is ready for a shift, we should do better than just to make a shift from a worn out dogma to a more fresh one. We should seize the moment to teach and to show that all dogmas should not be replaced by more fashionable ones, but with openness. In 93, I also said that what we have had is the future. Now we have more. We have more than two decades of experience, and we have a community which shares the spirit of openness. This is a spirit shaped sometimes a long history, sometimes in spite of history. The spirit needed and needs a home, both literally and in a metaphorical sense. There are more ways to perceive what we did over a quarter of a century. One way is to say that we have a history of home building. And what is now in front of us is a most important milestone of home building. I would like to express my sincere appreciation for those who shoulder this task. And finally, let me say a commonplace, in order to have open doors, we need a house. And I trust that we are now laying down the foundations of both a wonderful house and of open doors. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you here to share this memorable day for CEU. Today marks an important moment for our university and its student body. It gives us a moment to reflect on the past, the present, and the future of our home away from home. 
During the past year, some of us students have had a love-hate relationship with the campus construction and all that it entails. For instance, the student union office had to move at the beginning of the school year when a number of offices and departments were shuffled around. This, as you can imagine, how most movements are, was no walk in the park. Hence, the not so sweet feeling of the relationship. However, the new office we were relo relocated to only proved to be a cozier, more accessible office for students to visit us and take breaks at. So it turned out to be a place we enjoyed spending our time at. With the campus redevelopment project underway, this year students have had the opportunity to help in rebuilding the future CEU campus, making it an even more unique experience. From excavations and findings of historic landmarks to discussion forums, us students have, ha have been able to partake in this exciting expedition from the start and help mold the future of CEU. It has been amazing to see the innovative plans that are in store, advancing the CEU experience to higher horizons. I must say, it makes a current student a little envious. But hey, if we want to come back, if not as an alumna, to visit, maybe now is a good time to start considering a PhD program. <laughs> that way we can officially make use of the new high-tech facilities once they're ready. So it goes without saying, that I'm sure students, past, present, and future, will be thrilled to visit Nadarutsa, where they will be able to come here to either be welcomed as their new home away from home, or reminisce about the meaningful time spent here. Thank you. As the newest member on stage, I am so delighted to be here on the future grounds of the CEU Library to share a few words about what the library means to our community, both current and future. The current library is very much loved and as many of you will know, has very little room for any more books, computers, or even a vacant seat by noon each day. A current CEU student from China characterized the meaning of the library best when he said, there is a legend that there is the best chair in the library. And once you find it, you find your home for research. To have this opportunity to create a 21st century library, one with five or six floors if you count the garden on the roof, a cafe, and double the number of seats is a rare privilege. We are grateful to the CEU administration and board of trustees for their vision and support. The new CU library will continue to be vital to the intellectual life of the CEU community and to other researchers in Budapest, Central and Eastern Europe, and well beyond, including CEU's alumni all over the world via the internet. 21st century libraries are places where people, reflection, and invention meet. They are places where old ideas meet new, where, where solitary contemplation and lively engagement between people all have homes. They promote discovery and provide technology-rich spaces in which to work. Our architects are translating vision and pur purpose into limestone, wood, and concrete to create a library worthy of CEU's exciting next chapter, as John described so well. The impact of great libraries has been well chronicled from the ancient library of Alexandria in Egypt to the Bodleian Library in Oxford, one of Europe's oldest. The first CU library in Budapest, in contrast, was established only in 1992. During its first four years, it moved seven times. Yet, its impact has been no less profound on our community. The second CU library will surely not move as often, maybe never again, and will carry on its traditional values of promoting openness and tolerance, with a view to the Danube and what used to be called Roosevelt Terre. It was Roosevelt who said, libraries are essential to the functioning of a democratic society. Indeed, past and current affairs suggest libraries will endure, CEUs prominently among them. We can't wait to move in, and we hope to see all of you there. So now comes a, a magic moment of um, ceremonial special quality, particularly here in Budapest, where it is a tradition. 
at uh, moments of great renewal or building to take a time capsule and send it into space. We won't send it up there, we'll send it down into a hole in the building. And uh, this is a, a very special capsule, you can see it in front of you here, uh, which will be in the foundation stone of the, of the new campus. It contains the original plans for the campus in 1995, as well as the plans for the new building that will rise here that has been described by everyone here this morning and that you can imagine, uh, you can't see it yet. Um, as well as the plans for the renovations of the rest of the campus, which of course continue on into the next building and then soon will go into other buildings as well. So in this way, we look back at our history, the construction of the first campus, and forward to imagine what the future will hold for our university, for this university. So this is a great tradition, and I now uh, call upon the capsule bearers. I think we even have a new designation in CEU. If you were a capsule bearer, you were the most honored member of the alumni, two members of the alumni, I think will come forward and bear the capsule uh, to its place. And we'll all go over there and see what we can do to make sure it stays in place. So um, if the capsule bearers are here, here they are. I'm sorry. You were standing so quietly, I didn't even see you. So thank you. We'll now proceed over. nobody will find it unless there will be an archaeological excavation here in 500 years. And then all those people will be very happy about it. Not me today, but they who will find it. So maybe that's the message. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> one, one time, one time. 